Welcome to another science video. I'm Jeremy Krug and in this series we're going to be learning about waves and their properties. This is a series of several videos. I hope you enjoy these. If you like what you see and have learned something from this please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so already. Now when we talk about a wave, a wave is basically a disturbance that passes through a medium. So when we think about a wave, it might look something like this. And if you've ever seen a uh, wave, it may go through a medium such as water. That might be the medium that we're talking about, a wave on the ocean that goes through water, of course. It might be a sound wave that passes through the medium of air. Uh, it might be uh, some other wave that passes through even a solid object or possibly in the case of light or electromagnetic waves it might pass through the medium of the vacuum of space empty space and so we can have various types of media through which the wave uh, can pass through now in every case it's important to remember that waves transmit energy waves transmit energy we'll talk more about that here in a later video However, the wave itself doesn't have any mass. Waves transmit energy, although they normally don't have any transfer of, of matter or mass themselves, uh, just unto themselves. For example, maybe you've seen a, a uh, perhaps a, a ball game and people do the wave where they're standing up, you know, they're, they're standing up and it looks like this wave is going through the stadium. Well, there's a transmission of some energy, right? but it doesn't mean that the people are actually moving to different seats, right? If the people got up and started walking around the stadium, that's not the wave, is it? Waves transmit energy, although there isn't tr uh, uh, an actual uh, mass that's associated with that wave itself. Now, we're going to talk about several different types of waves, and there, this is not a complete list, but this is a, a list of several types of waves that you've probably heard of, maybe uh, heard discussed, ocean waves. This is a type of wave that you know, certainly can uh, pack a lot of energy in there. You've heard of tsunamis. You've heard of people who have gone surfing. Well, we're talking about ocean waves in that case. There are shock waves. You've heard of these before. Perhaps uh, when an airplane breaks the sound barrier, there's a shock wave associated with that uh, with that with that sonic boom and so there's a shock wave there we can talk about earthquake waves in fact in the next video we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about earthquakes and some of the waves that are associated with those uh, we can talk about waves that are on strings uh, whenever you play a guitar or even uh, have a piano where the hammer hits the string on the piano. There are waves on strings. Sometimes those waves are called standing waves because we have those waves that are, for all practical purposes, standing on the string. They have the same uh, height that's basically transmitted along the string. We can talk about sound waves. We'll actually spend a good amount of time in this unit learning about sound waves and some of the properties that those sound waves can have. And of course, we're going to talk about light waves, or what we sometimes call electromagnetic waves. So there are several types of waves. These aren't all the types of waves. There are even new types of waves being uh, discussed and um, discovered all the time. We've heard of something called a gravitational wave. This is something that has just recently been uh, confirmed, and there are other types of waves as well. I'd like to take a couple minutes to talk about the parts of a wave. So here's this picture that we put up here a few minutes ago about just a typical wave. Well, waves have very distinctive parts. For example, if we look at the top of the wave, this very top peak part right here, that's called the crest of the wave. So as you can see here, the wave that we have shown on the screen, we have four different crests on this wave. Now the bottom part of the wave is called the trough. And so we have a few of those here. It looks like one, two, three, four, five troughs are pictured here in this uh, part of the wave that, that's in this, uh, in this picture here. Now, if we take the midpoint of the wave, so that this point right here up to the very tip top, that distance from the midpoint up to the top of the wave is called the amplitude. So the taller the wave is, 
the higher its amplitude. And we'll talk more about what that means here, especially with regard to sound waves a little bit later in a future video. Also, we can talk about the distance from one crest to the next crest on a wave. And that's called the wavelength. And so that's a certain distance. That's just the distance from one point on a wave to the, the same point on the next wave. So there we have the wavelength, we have amplitude, crest, and the trough. So those are some very important parts of the wave that you need to be associated with as far as the, the vocabulary goes here. Now, as a reminder, even though we just have this picture of a wave and it doesn't seem to be moving, the fact is waves are always going to be moving. In fact, if you've ever sat on the ocean uh, uh, shore, perhaps on the beach, you've noticed that those waves are always rolling in, aren't they? Waves are always moving. And we could say the same thing about waves on strings and waves of light and sound waves and things like that. They're always moving. In fact, one thing we can do is count the number of waves that pass us or hit us in one second. Well, that's called the frequency of that wave. Now, some waves may have a very uh, small frequency. If, for example, if you're sitting on the beach and you're watching the waves roll in, you might find that the number of waves that pass you in, in one second is really very low. It might be like one-tenth of a wave per second. Um, in fact, I guess that means that it takes 10 seconds for each wave to roll in, right? It, it, that means a wave hits you every 10 seconds. That might be how it is if it's a very calm day at the beach. Uh, if you have something that has a very high frequency, like light waves, we might be talking about a frequency of billions of waves per second, which means that maybe you're sitting somewhere and there are billions of waves hitting you. So we can talk about a very high frequency, like in the case of light. We can talk about lower frequencies, like in the case of sound, and very low frequencies, like in the case of, well, ocean waves that we have here. Now, when we talk about two different variables here, notice that they seem to be related to each other. We've just talked about frequency in this slide here, but in the last slide, we talked about the wavelength. The wavelength is how far apart each wave cycle is. The frequency is how often they hit you, how many per second. Well, those two things are actually related to each other. And they are related to each other with this equation here that's partly covered up. It says speed equals wavelength times frequency. So for a wave, we can say that the, that the speed of the wave is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So however fast that wave is going, and some waves go very quickly, like light waves travel at about 300 million meters per second. Very, very fast. We'll talk more about that later. Sound waves travel a little, actually quite a bit slower, about 767 miles per hour. I know that those are different units, but uh, we can still tell that that's very much uh, more slow compared to a light wave. And then, of course, we could talk about waves of uh, waves on the ocean. You know, those are much slower still. How about the wavelength? Once again, the wavelength is the distance from one wave's crest to the next crest on the wave cycle. And then the frequency is how many waves are hitting you per second. So we can say that's wave cycles per second. And the unit that we use to talk about that is hertz. So sometimes that's abbreviated HZ, or just spelled out H-E-R-T-Z, as we can see here. Now, how does this equation work? Well, let's try an example. Let's say that we're going to have a, uh, a problem like this. The human male voice has a frequency around 120 hertz. Uh, so that's 120 wave cycles per second. If the speed of sound in air is 0.145 miles per second, calculate the wavelength of the sound of this person's voice waves. Well, we're going to use that equation that we just had on the board. It was speed equals wavelength times frequency. So we're just going to plug and chug into this equation here. The speed of the sound wave here, it says, is 0.145 miles per second. So I'll plug that in. And then it's equal to wavelength, 
Well, that's what we're solving for. It says calculate the wavelength. So we're going to have to leave that as our unknown. We'll just call it wavelength. And the frequency is 120 hertz. So we'll put that as 120 wave cycles per second. So when we uh, cancel out seconds on both sides of the equal sign, we can see that we're just going to divide 0.145 by 120 in order to solve for wavelength using simple algebra here. So when I do that, I find that every wave cycle has a wavelength of 0 0.001208 miles. And so that's the length of the that's the length of our wavelength. Now, that number may not make a whole lot of sense to us. Um, we can convert that to a unit that you might use more often. Uh, in science, we would probably use meters. You might use centimeters, something like that. But in everyday life, it's okay to use a feet. So we're going to convert from miles to feet. We know that there are 500, 280 feet in one mile. I'm going to cancel miles top and bottom. And when we multiply these across, we find that the wavelength is equal to about 6.38 feet. So imagine that. You can't see sound waves, can you? Those are invisible. But if you could see them, you'd see the wave with a wavelength of about 6.38 feet as it, as it was uh, moving through the air. Well, I hope you've learned a little bit about the, the way that sound waves and, and other waves work. You, in this video, we've learned about the types of waves, the parts of waves, and of course, how to do some simple calculations using speed, wavelength, and frequency. If you learned something, please hit that like button if you would be so kind as to do so, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I hope you, I hope you join me again on my channel where we can learn some more science together.